Sometimes even the most simplest of errors can be a big pain in your Angular development process. Getting stuck in an error early on in your project can result in demotivation and you getting all drained up. So in this video, I'll be covering the top 5 most common Angular errors that you'll come across while building Angular apps. Discuss why they happen and what you can do to resolve them. So the next time they happen, you know exactly what to do. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first error is that your element name or your component is not a known element. So what it means? This means that Angular can't figure out where your component is coming from. So let's see this in a, as an example. And I have an application here called Angular Firebase Auth, which I use for my course. In that, I have added a custom component here, my custom component, and it's a standalone component. Now, if I try to add this in my login component here, and I try to use it, so I'm going to use app my custom component. And it's a pretty standard way to declare components. But now, when you look at this error, you can see that app my custom component is not a known element. Now there are two reasons that is given. If my app my custom component is an Angular component, then verify that it is included in the imports of this component. And if it's not, then it's a web component, then add this. Now the second thing is basically very rarely. Usually the issue is the first error here or the first reason. So what do we do here? If it's a standalone component, it's really easy. So you need to add this to your imports here. And to add it to the imports, you also need to import it from here. So you're going to add this, let's say my custom component, my custom component, and then we can simply add it to this and it's going to import it, add it to the imports here as well. So now you can see the error goes away. Pretty simple. Now, if you're using ng modules, then it is a bit more complex, but still it's easy to resolve. So I have a project here open, which is the same project, but it is an ng module based project. So in this ng modules based project, I have the same component here in my components, as you can see my custom component here, but I've not added it to any ng module. So let's go to your login component and let's try to add it in the same position that we added in the previous project. Let's add my custom component here. And you can see that it gives the same error here. App my custom is not a known element. So how do we resolve this here? Now, since this is not a standalone component, we can't really add it to the imports for this component. So we need to add it to the imports or the declarations for the parent uh, ng module for this component. So the parent ng module for this component is app module here, as you can see. Let's click on this. And then when we go inside of it, we can see that there's declarations and there's an imports. Now, if it's your own custom component and it's not a standalone component, you need to add it to your declarations. So if we, for example, add it to my declarations here, I say my custom component, it's going to automatically add it in the imports here and you can quickly see that the error goes away. The other case is that it's not your custom component, it's some other component from a third party library. If it's from a third party library, then you need to add it to the imports of this ng module. Also, you can also add it to the imports if it is a standalone component. Okay, so that was error number one. Error number two is can't bind to property since it is in a known property of the specific component. Now, what it means is that Angular cannot find the property that you're trying to bind this value to since the component does not have it. So let's look at an example again. And as you can see, we have the custom component that we added previously. Let's say, for example, we try to add a property to it. So for example, I say I have custom property and we have a value that we are trying to assign to this custom property. And when we look at this, we are going to get the same error that we just talked about. So can't bind to custom property since it isn't a known property of app my custom component. Now, again, the second option is about some web component. We are not going to do that. And the third one is also not, we don't want to suppress this error. The first one is if app my custom component is an Angular component and it has custom property input, then verify that it is included in the component imports. So we have it already included in our component. But then why are we getting the error? We're getting the error because we don't have this input defined in our component. So that is the first case and the simplest case. So let's try to do that. Let's try to go in my app, my custom comp and let's add an input that is missing. Let's say we call this custom property and string. And now when we go to login here, we can see that we have no errors. Now let's also try to do another thing. The second case, which is like, for example, if you want to add our ng model uh, directive to our component, let's suppose that it's a form element. And let's try to assign the same thing. And we get the same error as you can see as we got before. But in this case, the, the problem is a bit different. 
So this is not an input that we want to add to our custom component. This is actually part of the ng model directive, which comes from the forms module. So in this case, what we need to do is we don't need to add our own custom input. We need to import it here in the imports. So we are going to import the forms module here, which contains the ng model directive. And once we import this, you can now see that the error goes away. So these are the two cases in which these errors can come about. Now, again, I showed it for the standard component case. Now for an ng module based app, you will need to add this to the imports of the ng module, which contains the component itself. Okay, so error number three is the null injector error. No provider for the injected service. So what this means is that Angular can't find the service that you want to use in your component in the dependency injection tree for the component itself. So let's see this with an example as well. And I have the same app as you can see. And we have a service here uh, called the user service, which we use to get the current state of the user that is logged in in Firebase in this app. So let's go to the service. And if you go in the service, you're going to notice here that there's an injectable decorator here and it has a provided in root. Now, what this means is that this service is going to be provided in at the very root level of the app and is going to be available throughout the app with just one instance of this service. Now, what if you remove this? If you remove this, it's not going to be uh, provided by default anywhere. And let's try to see what happens. So if we save this and we have run this app already, and now we go here, we can see that there's a blank page and you can't really see anything. And you have this error called the null injector error here. And we, uh, if you carefully read this, you can see that it says standalone app component and user service, user service, user service, null injector error, user service. So um, Angular means that you haven't actually provided the user service anywhere in your app for this specific component. So how to resolve this? Now you have to make sure that you have provided this specific service that you're trying to use in your component at some level for that component. So in this case, we have the app component, which is basically the, the top level component in the app. And you can see that we are using the user service here. And that is the source of the error because Angular cannot find where the service is. So what we can do here, since it is a standalone component, we need to add in the providers array, the user service. Now what this will do is that it's going to create an instance of the user service and it's going to provide the user service at the level of the app component. And of course, all of its children as well. So if we save this now and we try to run this again, you can see the error basically goes away. So now Angular can find that service because it has been provided now. But in this case, the user service is meant to be a singleton in my app. So it is better to keep it at the default setting, which is provided in root. Now, of course, this is a standalone app. If you wanted to do this in an ng module based app, you need to add it to the providers array for that ng module that contains that parent in which you're trying to use that service. So uh, make sure that you have that in the providers for that ng module. Great. Now the fourth error I have kept as not an Angular error specifically, but it's actually a JavaScript error, which you will come across very frequently, especially if you're working with API endpoints and you're getting data from the API. So that is cannot read properties of undefined or cannot read properties of null. Now what it means is that you're trying to read a specific property of an object, which is undefined or which is null. So let's try to replicate this in our Angular app. So we have the landing page here. Now we are going to add, let's say we add an object, which is of an any type. We keep it an empty object. And now in the landing, we are going to, in the template, we are going to add my object dot ang hello. Let's say we try to access this. Now no errors here. So let's try to save this. And now when we go in our application, everything seems to work fine, but you can see that we get an error in your console here. So if you zoom in a bit, you can see cannot read properties of undefined reading hello. So it's trying to read hello of the angular property, which is actually not present. And it tells you exactly where the error is. So you can go in landing component and you can see that where the error is exactly here. So how do you fix this? Now there are three ways you can fix this. So the first way is that you can add types to your project here. So make sure that any data object that you have that you're getting from the API is has a specific type so that you know in advance that uh, what the structure of the data will be and you don't end up using any properties that are actually not there in that specific type. So uh, in this case, for example, 
uh, I have kept it any. If I, for example, remove this any, and you can see that I immediately get a compile time error, which is that property Angular does not exist on type this. So you can spot these errors before actually going to runtime, by which time it gets really messy and it's it's much more difficult to diagnose it that is one thing but in some cases even if you use types you can get this erratic data from the api side because there might be bugs from the api side or the data has changed and you were not communicated about it so in those cases you need to lock in the data object you need to check if the structure is the same as you're trying to access it okay and the third uh, thing you can do is that when you're trying to access some properties which you suspect that they could be undefined or null you can add some checks to it so for example here we can add an ng container and let's say we can add an ng if here and we can check that if my object angular let's revert the type here to any here so that we don't get any compile time errors and you can check here that my object dot angular is defined and then you can put this inside of the ng container so now it's not going to try to access this object until and unless angular is also present so now when we save this you can see everything works as before and you don't get that that error of cannot treat properties undefined so this can be a handy tool when uh, you have some data which is variable so if it can change you know that it can become undefined or it might become be undefined initially so that's the third way of dealing with this if you're getting value from this video i'd like to invite you to uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel so that it can reach more people like you i also have a buy me a coffee page where you can tip me a small amount or you can also buy any of the small front-end widgets that I create from my shop there so that you can support me in some small way. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so error number five, the last of the errors is the expression changed after it was checked error. Now this error is pretty ambiguous and uh, I personally found it the most difficult to understand initially. But what this means is that your component data is basically changing after the change detection cycle has run or during the change detection cycle has run which might lead your app to an inconsistent state so let's see how we can recreate this in our app now let's go to the landing page component here and let's say for example we create a variable here let's call this custom variable and let's give it a value of hello here okay and let's use it in our template here so we can do custom variable let's try this out and how this looks so all really simple hello world there's no error here now let's go back and let's try to make a small change let's try to add a lifecycle method called ng after now this ng after view in it and also ng after view checked both of these are called when just when the change detection cycle has just completed so what we're going to do is that we are going to try to change this variable value inside of this uh, lifecycle method and let's say i say hello after change detection all right now let's see what happens and now you can see the text remains the same or it's it, it is to the latest value but you can see that we get a nasty error here expression changed after it has been checked error and it has a lot of detail to it so expression has changed after it was checked previous value was hello the current value is hello after change detection so also tells you about the component that this happens so what what's exactly happening here is angular has run the change detection cycle for this component and right at the end when it's just completed it the one of the component properties changed its data so um, in development mode now this only happens in development mode and in development mode angular actually runs this change detection process twice so uh, the first time it runs it that is uh, okay the second time it runs just to check if any of the properties have not changed and in this case it finds out that the custom variable has changed now when this finds out that this variable has changed it sends this error or i would say it's a warning that your app can lead to an inconsistent state and you should check whether the data is appearing correctly so what can you do to resolve this so now the real solution for this is that you should not change data in your lifecycle methods like ng after view in it or and you should ensure that there is unidirectional data flow so your user does something or an api sends something and basically that results in a data change which then translates to the template so there should be a unidirectional data flow so another hack though if you for example you have to absolutely use the lifecycle methods because of some reason is to actually add a timeout now what a timeout does is basically it delays that specific code towards the next lifecycle or the next change detection cycle so what you can do here is that you can add a set timeout here and in that set timeout you can do this custom variable here and 
even if you keep it just for one second it's going to schedule it for another change detection cycle and it's not going to change that variable there so let's say if you try this out and now you can see that the data changes fine and you get no expression change after it was checked error here but again this is just a hack and it would be best if you don't use the ng after view in it or ng after view checked lifecycle methods to change the data that you have and you try to ensure your app has unidirectional data flow okay so that's the end of this video i hope uh, some of these errors and these explanations were useful to some of you guys out there when you get errors in your own angular apps now as before if you found value in this video please like this video subscribe there so that you can reach more people like you and also view any of my other videos which you find useful or which you find interesting thanks for watching and i'll see you next time